Hello everyone, LA Shark Hunter here with our part three of shark fishing how to, uh, learning the basics of uh, shark fishing from a land based perspective. If you want to catch a large fish from the land, this is where to learn how to do it. So, as promised, today part three is going to be on the mono section of your leader. This is referred to as the shock leader, the sliding trace, heavy mono, whatever you want to call it. So what I have here is a rig I used a couple nights ago. This is actually the cable bite section that we made in the video part one. I used it the other night. Okay. And uh, this is the mono section. This is a uh, heavy mono. I first have to stop and say that uh, there's so much to talk about. I can't put all this in a 10 minute video. So I'm going to do the best I can um, to give you a general idea of what you need to use and how to use it. And as we go continue making these videos, and maybe we get more comments and uh, people asking questions, we'll know which direction to go. But um, you can't shark fish from the beach without this piece. This is so important. I could talk about this for an hour. So, uh, so we're just going to start. This is a, I have 40 feet of mono. Remember we made our rig with the heavy swivel? Then we put heavy mono to it. We just connected the mono to this swivel via cramps. This is a sliding snap swivel. This is what we attach our weight to. We have 40 feet of mino to another heavy swivel. Remember we want to use these big swivels to keep the sand out. Okay, so why do you need this? I mean, it's so many answers, but the general rundown is one, provides uh, protection from the shark's tail. When sharks death roll and roll into your line, they roll into this heavy mono section versus your line from your fishing reel. Uh, when you're fighting a big shark, he likes to dive down behind the sandbars. And if it's just your line from your fishing reel, he'll rub that line across the sandbar, pop, gone. Another big fish lost. And uh, probably the most important reason to use one as long as I do, which minimum is 30 feet. Now, what anybody, if you make one, you make it 15 feet, and you go, wow, that's long. It's not long enough. Minimum's 30. Mine generally run 40 to 50 feet. And this is because the actual leadering, when you fight the shark all the way into the beach, you see your swivel, you grab this heavy line, you're now controlling the fish with this heavy line, and you're not on top of the fish. So, it's a safety, it helps you land the fish quicker, and uh, puts more fish on the beach for you. So you much rather grab four, five, six hundred, seven hundred pound mono versus your hundred pound fishing line. Okay? So, I don't know if that really made sense, but hopefully as we go along it will. Okay, so this is the mono, connects to the cable. Alright, so now let's talk about the mono. This is a thousand pile mono. I use it. It works great. Um, a lot of guys use the heavy mono. Offers a lot of resistance. Lasts forever. It's good stuff. Um, this is a section of 500 pound mono um, that I bought. I have a whole spool of it. I don't even know if I bought it. Somebody gave it to me. I have hundreds of yards of this. I cut this to use in the video to show you how to make one. This is something I've been using for many, many years. You can laugh at it if you want. It's the uh, Rhino Tough Weed Eater line. It's uh, 0.105. Um, I don't even know where to begin on why I fish with this, but um, there's similarities. The reason I use this line, five, 600 pound line, because uh, they fit the same size crimps. Never had any issue with this. Uh, I'm not saying that 
it's better than anything else. I'm just saying I use it. It's easy to get and um, it works. And the bare minimum I would use, this is a spool of 400 pound mono. Would not use any less than 400. Uh, and this would take a little smaller crimp than I use. So I, I typically try to narrow my cost down. I use two point, excuse me, use 2.8 millimeter crimps or 2.9, whatever I buy. And then you want that line to fit. If you're gonna use thousand pound mono, then obviously you need heavier crimps. Okay, so I'm going really fast because I want this video to be short enough to keep everyone's attention and not bore you. But um, I don't like going fast because I want you to really learn and understand shark fishing. So we're gonna talk about crimps. This is a monofilament crimp. It's an aluminum monofilament crimp. This is a copper double barrel crimp. Aluminum crimps work great. Uh, you need the right tool for these. I've always used the double barrel copper crimps and I'm going to show you why here shortly. It's only because it's the ease of the tools that I have. Both work. You have to make sure you have the right size. Anytime you buy a line, order line, uh, you order the crimps that go with that line. Okay? So 2.8, 2.7, 2.9 generally go with the 5 to 600 pound mono. Uh, and on and on up. I mean, something like this, 1,000. I mean, it takes a, I don't know what it is, 3.0, 3.2, no telling. But if I was to order a new 1,000 pound mono, when I order it, I'd make sure and ask what size crimps go with it, and you order it. Crimps are cheap, mono's cheap, get plenty, and don't be scared to use it. Okay, so the example today is using the double barreled copper crimps. This is only about a five foot section, but it's just for the sake of the video. You really want it to be. 40 foot a line. Okay, so let's say 30. Let's say minimum you're going to make your heavy mono 30 foot to your bite section. Okay, so what I do is I put two crimps on my line. Okay. Alright, so it looks like this. Okay. Slide the swivel on. And then it goes one, and I tighten it up, and two. And this one, okay, so now I'm gonna cause a debate about how many crimps you need. You only need one. Let's get, let's clear that up right now. You're right, anybody who wants to argue about how many crimps you need, you only need one, I always use two. Okay, take my trusty 20 year old crimpers and with the double barrel crimpers, you only have to smash the middle. Make sure your line spread out like that. I move over and I work it down so it's nice and smooth. Okay. Okay, and then I might go back Make sure, okay, this is the one that holds your line, okay? Your line is secure. This crimp will hold to the strength of your line. This crimp, because I use a sliding weight system, I crimp it well, same way, okay? Okay? And now, now. Bam. I probably need to put a little more pressure on there. Let's do that. You know, you don't always get it right the very first time. I mean, you got to really press on it like that. Okay. I'm trying to make it look easy in the video. But bam. Now, 
This is the end that goes to your main line. Then you take a snap swivel and, okay, all right, here we go. This is about the size that I use. It's a little big. You want a big enough snap swivel that s slides freely on your line. This is what your weight's going to connect to. And I reckon our next video will be about the weight. And this is why I have a double crimp. Because when that weight is sliding around, it's hitting this crimp right here. It's beating on this crimp. And it's never touching the crimp that I'm counting on to hold my line. Okay, so then you would just go to your bite section, put it in that swivel that we made in the first two videos. You know, slide your two. Slide your two crimps on. Slide it through the bite section. Bam, crimp it. And in the end, I got a mess here. You gotta love how things happen when you're trying to show people something. Okay, so it'll look similar to that. I made this one kind of quick the other day. I should have cut that tag off right here. Or a lot of times I tape it up just like I did on this end. So, bam, just so you know, this is what I fish with. There's my sliding weight on um, swivel right here and then here's the end that you tie your main line to um, I'm hoping the videos in the future will show all this going to use we're really getting serious trying to make videos most of my shark fishing is at night it's hard for me to get daytime videos and you can see that 20 out circle shark but that's how we do it that's it so Make sure, part one and two, you make your bite section. Part three is the heavy mono. You need heavy mono, heavy mono to land these sharks. You want it a minimum of 30 feet. You want your mono crimped with the correct size crimp. So whatever mono you buy, make sure you buy the right size crimps and crimp it down. Do not hammer. Uh, smash with a brick, anything. Buy you a good swedge if you're going to use mono aluminum crimps. Buy you a good swedge uh, from a tackle dealer or even Home Depot Lowe's. You can buy them. They're fairly expensive, but they're worth it if you're going to use mono crimps. Uh, if you use the double barrels, you can just buy you a little cheap pair of these and they'll work fine. Uh, just for whoever's going to say, well, that's not the right way to do it. I've been doing it for 20 years like that, and I think it works pretty good. So, that's part three. I'm hoping that uh, anybody watching these videos really is getting an opportunity to learn, put the right pieces together so he can get out there on the beach and catch some sharks. And really, I should have mentioned this in the very first video, you know, um, all these, what I'm showing you will catch smaller sharks, but this... What I do is target large sharks. Uh, my goal every time I go to the beach is catch a 10 footer. How often does that happen? It's rarely. But we catch plenty of sharks between six and 10 foot and we catch our share over 10. So this rig, these rigs really work. So uh, just try to hang in there, follow the steps. If this video wasn't clear enough for you, um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment and, and Ask me and, and I'll try to make a different video or do my best to answer your questions in the comments. Thank you for watching. Um, and how to part four will be up as soon as I can get it made.